Volcanic eruptions are undoubtedly among the most elemental natural spectacles that we find on our blue home planet. The smoking mountains of fire have the power to bury entire regions under a layer of red-hot lava and ash and throw countless people's lives into chaos in a matter of moments. And in fact, some volcanoes even have the potential to affect the entire global climate in the event of an eruption. We'll now tell you which volcanic eruptions have already been associated with global catastrophes and which fire-breathing structures we should be aware of. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the most terrifying volcanoes that has just erupted. Toba Volcano a first glance at the gentle waters of Lake Toba on the Indonesian island of Sumatra gives no indication that a brutal spectacle once took place here. This only changes when we take a closer look at the background story of the body of water. In fact, Lake Toba embodies the largest crater lake on Earth. Around 74,000 years ago, the eruption of the supervolcano Toba drastically transformed the surrounding landscape. The experts suspect that this was the most violent volcanic eruption in the last two million years. The ash that was ejected during this gigantic event can still be found throughout the Indian Ocean and in many regions of India. The eruption of Toba reached a value of 8 on the Richter scale. The explosive structure spat out a total of 2,800 cubic kilometers of material, which was sometimes catapulted 80 kilometers into the air and was distributed there in the atmosphere. This also includes 4.4 gigatons of sulfur, and the sulfuric acid that was formed as a result transformed large areas into cold, twilight landscapes. And indeed, the natural spectacle was to have far-reaching consequences for the entire planet. In this regard, the scientists' models state that a global cooling of 3 to 5 Kelvin occurred. At the beginning of this cold phase, the value could even have been 17 Kelvin. In addition, investigations of drill samples from Greenland showed that the temperature of the sea dropped by 5 Kelvin within a few millennia. To put this into perspective, it normally takes around 100,000 years before such large temperature changes occur. In detail, the eruption of the Toba could have been the basis for the coldest phases of the so-called Wurm Ice Age. In addition, some experts are convinced that the long-term consequences of the eruption have also severely affected the spread of modern humans. Supervolcanoes but what actually distinguishes structures like the Toba Volcano from conventional fire mountains? Well, this question can be answered primarily with the shape. Due to their extremely large magma chambers, supervolcanoes do not form typical cones when they erupt, but rather gigantic collapsed basins, so-called calderas. Although there's no universal scientific definition, an eruption is sometimes referred to as a super eruption when it scores 8 on the Volcanic Explosivity Index. The last time this happened was an estimated 26,500 years ago. Traces of this event are visible today in the form of New Zealand's Lake Taupo. We've already told you how devastating the consequences of such a super eruption can be, but how would such an event affect life in our modern days? One thing is certain, the amount of ash emitted would be sufficient to cover an area the size of a full-grown continent. The number of casualties associated with an eruption depends primarily on the location of the supervolcano. Within a radius of 100 kilometers, however, all life would be destroyed at once. But even outside this death zone, the danger is far from over. Even several hundred kilometers from the center of the eruption, the weight of the spat out ash masses would be so great that the roofs of houses would collapse, and the rest of the infrastructure such as air traffic and electricity and water supplies would begin to falter. Even further away, 
fine particles of volcanic dust would become microscopic killers. If the tiny granules get into the lungs through inhalation, the result is bronchitis and asthma attacks and, in the long term, COPD, lung cancer, and silicosis. Of course, the animal and plant world is not spared from such a devastating event. The volcanic deposits would affect the growth of plants and mature trees could snap under this load. If it then starts to rain, this so-called tephra layer turns into a kind of natural cement which would significantly delay the repopulation of the regions. As previously mentioned, the climate catastrophe associated with an eruption of a supervolcano would present itself in the form of a volcanic winter. In the early 19th century, people had to experience firsthand what such a development meant for the life of the global community. The Year Without a Summer Brilliant sunshine, flowering plants, and a relaxed atmosphere, all of this was sorely missed in the summer months of 1816. In particular, the inhabitants of Western and Southern Europe and the inhabitants of North America were confronted with inexplicable weather phenomena. Frost at night, cold temperatures, storms, and floods determined the usually warm season. At that time, people were puzzled as to what could have caused this phenomenon, and indeed it was to take around a hundred years before this mystery was solved. In 1920, climate scientist William Jackson Humphrey realized that the year without a summer was due to the eruption of Mount Tambora on the Indonesian island of Sumbawa. This happened in April 1815 and killed around 70,000 people. The 150 cubic kilometers of dust, ash, and sulfur compounds were then distributed like a veil in the Earth's atmosphere. And indeed, a few years ago, Humphrey's theory was to be confirmed confirmed in a modern study. At that time, the unexpected weather conditions led to massive crop failures, as a result of which livestock was severely decimated in some places. As a result, grain prices shot up to unprecedented heights, and severe famine broke out in parts of Europe. Contemporary accounts tell that people ate, quote, the most unnatural and disgusting things to fill their empty bellies. In desperation, the citizens grabbed grass, leaves, snails, and unripe fruit, among other things. No less serious were the outbreaks of typhus and plague that hit some parts of Europe and the Mediterranean in the years that followed. In Ireland alone, an estimated 800,000 people contracted typhoid fever. Nearly 45,000 were unable to win the battle against hunger and disease. The Donakil Depression While this area may seem inviting when you look at cleverly snapped photos of the region, the Donakil Depression is said to be one of the most uninhabitable places on Earth. Much like Hawaii's Big Island, the Donakil Depression is home to a large volcano as well. Located in Ethiopia, this place looks incredibly interesting. However, no human or animal would ever be able to live here for any extended period of time. The Dalal volcano that could be found nearby is said to be home to some of the purest salt in the area. The bubbling hot springs are known to twist and turn through the local mountains, creating a beautiful, picturesque scene. On top of this, there are yellow-orange sulfur deposits scattered throughout the area, making the whole place look as though it were part of an extraterrestrial planet. Researchers have taken samples of the water in this area and have learned that it's so acid that no life whatsoever has been able to live there. Most water has trace amounts of DNA in it from fish, plant life, or even humans. However, scientists say that there was not a single shred of DNA detected in this water, making the Donakil Depression one of the most isolated places on Earth. Just one look at the place will help bring this into perspective, as you'll notice that there's a serious lack of any natural plant life. Impending Danger Although the Earth's supervolcanoes have been studied scientifically for some time, their exact number isn't recorded. 
One of the most famous representatives of this type of volcano is, without a doubt, the Yellowstone in the national park that gives it its name in the USA. This elemental structure can already look back on a 17 million year old history. Its origin is a so called hot spot, or an area where hot material from the Earth's mantle rises below the Earth's crust. At a depth of around 45 kilometers, there's a first magma chamber, the volume of which is estimated to be 46,000 cubic kilometers. The volume of the upper chamber is again given as 10,000 cubic kilometers. In a scientific analysis from 2020, experts came to the conclusion that two super eruptions occurred here almost 9 and 8.7 million years ago. As part of this, around 1,700 and 2,800 cubic kilometers of material were ejected. At least three other major eruptions occurred over the ensuing period. Thus, the eruption series 640,000 years ago created an overlapping caldera 80 by 50 kilometers in size. Given the great catastrophes unleashed by a supervolcano eruption, a fundamental question arises. Will Yellowstone one day erupt again? The researchers' answer to this is possibly yes, but the observation of the system does not indicate that this will happen in the foreseeable future. Phases of thermal unrest are registered again and again, but so far, these have fortunately remained without consequences. Volcanic Shipwreck During World War II, U.S. forces placed 24 ordinary boats and barges as breakwaters around the island of Iwo Jima. When the war was over, the artificial breakwaters were left behind and sunk beneath the water, before recently being brought back to the surface by an underwater volcano. In fact, the volcano erupted some time ago, creating its own small island. The earthquake that followed soon after spat about a dozen of the sunken ships onto the surface of the volcanic island. While the ships weren't particularly deep underwater before, it's impressive that a magnitude 6.1 earthquake was able to wake the objects from their wet slumber. La Garita Caldera when it comes to the question of the most violent volcanic eruptions of all time, we cannot ignore the gigantic La Garita Caldera. But before we go into more detail about the violent event that took place in southwestern Colorado 26 to 28 million years ago, let's briefly draw the bow back to the eruption of the Toba. As we told you at the beginning, this eruption had drastic effects on the global climate. However, the spectacle that led to the formation of La Garita Caldera may have been twice as powerful as the Toba eruption. The corresponding value on the Volcanic Explosivity Index is given as 9.2 a total of around 5,000 cubic kilometers of material were ejected at that time. The 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, which killed 875 people, was 500 times weaker. In fact, the list of all known supervolcanoes goes far beyond the representatives presented so far. The Phlegrian Fields in Italy, the Altiplano Puna Complex in South America, and the so-called Traps are among those volcanic structures that are considered potentially devastating. A study published in the journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters in 2017 paints an extremely worrying picture. As part of their work, the scientists came to the conclusion that supervolcanoes erupt much more frequently than previously assumed. According to this, such a super eruption would occur every 5,200 to 48,000 years. For comparison, the run-up to the assumed spans amounted to 45,000 to 714,000 years. The future will show when such an event will next take place and how we'll then manage to deal with the consequences of the catastrophe. Mount Erebus Volcano even though the land of Antarctica has been covered in ice for as long as we know, it's still home to several dormant volcanoes. Though, contrary to this, there are a few active volcanoes as well that could erupt at any moment. 
One of these massive mountains of lava is Mount Erebus. This volcano has been around long before the dawn of man, with researchers estimating that it could have been boiling beneath the Earth's crust for the equivalent of 1.3 million years. This volcano is further south than any other volcano on Earth, and if it happens to erupt, it could have dire consequences for most animals that live in Antarctica. This mountain sits alone and has rarely ever been visited by researchers. It's not that scientists don't want to know more about this flaming hot mountain, it's simply that there's no reasonable way to travel there without risking the lives of the researchers and crew members. The temperatures in this area are extremely cold and the weather is unpredictable, to put it lightly. However, despite all these challenges, a team of scientists managed to trek across Antarctica and visit the volcano back in 1972. This marked one of the only times in modern history that humans have been able to visit the volcano and investigate the surrounding areas. The volcano was originally discovered way back in 1841, but English explorer James Clark Ross wasn't able to do much research when he stumbled across this behemoth. He named the mountain Erebus after his research vessel, and the name has stuck ever since. The mountain was scaled for the very first time at the turn of the 20th century, with explorer Ernest Shackleton leading an expedition. Small amounts of research have been conducted on the volcano over the years, but the most fruitful expedition took place in 2013. A team of researchers headed out to the mountain to document any potential signs of life that may surround this boiling pot of lava. As it would turn out, they discovered several advanced organisms that have been living deep within the heart of the volcano. Not only were these organisms able to survive the extreme heat, but they were also able to develop resistance to the cold temperatures as well. According to some scientists, these may be some of the most unique beings to have ever roamed the Earth, but it will likely take many years before we're able to learn more about them. Mount St. Helens Washington is the home of one of the world's most well-known volcanoes called Mount St. Helens. Back in 1980, science experts became aware that the volcano was about to erupt and potentially threaten the lives of thousands of people. The volcano had been building up for over a week and it was bound to blow at any second. Blue flames were seen in the volcano's craters, with lightning sparking all around the top of the volcano, a common sight to see when a volcano is near an eruption, ash clouds began to fill the sky, with the ground shaking and squealing more each day. Everything finally came crashing down on May 18, 1980, when the volcano finally burst and the northern portion of the ground broke away, causing an incredible eruption that measured VEI-5 on the scale, one of the highest ratings ever recorded in America. This eruption led to over 50 people losing their lives, with the entire entire mountain appearing to dissolve in front of our eyes. Lava began freely flowing down the mountain, devouring everything in its path and leaving nothing behind. This has widely been considered the most dramatic eruption in American history, and certainly one of the worst natural disasters that North America has ever seen. Ball's Pyramid this may seem like an odd entry in this list of terrible volcanoes, but pay attention to the end. You don't want to miss this one. Officially, the rocky island of Bull's Pyramid is uninhabited. In 2001, however, researchers made an amazing discovery on the 560-meter-high massive in the middle of the sea, a tree lobster. At first, finding an insect doesn't seem particularly exciting. However, this changes abruptly when we consider that this this species of stick insect was considered extinct until it was rediscovered. As early as 1920, the population of crawling animals had been reduced so dramatically that they were practically nowhere to be found. Incidentally, the island is the relic of an ancient volcano that formed 7 million years ago. The Blue Volcano 
Volcanoes are, without a doubt, one of the most fascinating, beautiful, yet dangerous structures in nature. Anyone who's ever seen one of these gigantic mountains of fire knows that within a moment's notice, a volcano can do irreversible damage that could completely wipe out an entire city. We now know about the early signs of a volcanic eruption, such as the mountains spitting ash, smoke, or steam from the peak. These warning signs can sometimes give us days, weeks, or years to prepare for an upcoming eruption. We know from experience that eruptions like this always spew hot yellow lava, right? Wrong. In fact, there's a very special volcano that's known to erupt with vibrant blue lava. Known as the Feuerberg, this volcano can be found on the island of Ijen and attracts thousands of visitors each year. This is one of the only blue volcanoes in the world. But how does a volcano manage to glow blue? The volcano is filled with incredibly hot sulfur gas. As this gas reaches the surface, it mixes together with the lava. When this happens, sulfur dioxide is produced. Liquid sulfur soon begins to form, thus resulting in a beautiful blue color. What's interesting is that the blue color is not produced until the gas catches fire. However, what makes this process even more interesting is that it cannot be seen during daylight hours. The glow is so minimal that it can only be seen at night. Kilauea when you think about Hawaii, you probably think about mild temperatures, a cool ocean breeze, and beautiful weather year-round, right? Well, that's not always the case. If you take a look at Hawaii's Big Island, you've learned that it's home to one of the largest volcanoes in the world. The temperatures inside a volcano can reach points that are beyond our wildest imagination, with the hot lava melting anything in its path. Because of this, the areas surrounding this volcano are super hot. To add to that, this volcano was active from 1983 to 2018, and some researchers believe that it may be active once again. The last major eruption from the volcano was near the end of 2020, when lava once again spilled from the mountain and formed another new lava lake. The entire island has been shaped by lava. When this lava cools, it creates dense dry land that after a number of years can be inhabited. Because of this, as years have passed by, the island's shape continues to change as more lava is poured into the ocean. If you've never been to Hawaii, this this is an island that is certainly worth visiting. Mega Tsunami Due to Volcanic Activity on La Palma the Cumbre Vieja is a volcanic chain where there have been several eruptions. The last time the Earth spewed lava there was in 2012 for three months. The Canary Island was enlarged by 48 hectares, but almost 3,000 houses were also destroyed. As violent as the Cumbre Vieja's volcanism is, the greater danger is if its flank slides into the sea. A crack had already formed during a volcanic eruption in 1949, and the west the flank of the mountain ridge has slipped somewhat. Should it crash completely, it would cause a mega tsunami that would sweep across the Atlantic at the speed of a jet plane. After a few hours, the British Isles and North America would be reached, and the wave would still be between 30 and 60 meters high. This would destroy cities like Boston and New York, but also places up to 25 kilometers inland. Experts think this is unlikely in the next 10,000 years, unless a variety of unfavorable conditions coincide. We may feel as though we should be immune to situations like this by now, but the truth is, our borders are not very well secured from natural disasters. Hurricanes and tsunamis still pose a major threat to many parts of the world, particularly North America. Each year, hurricanes claim the lives of dozens of people in the United States and completely ruin communities and change people's lives forever. What do you think about the elemental power of volcanoes? As always, let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's video in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed our detour into the brutal world of volcanic eruptions. Also, while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date from now on. Finally, 
feel free to take a look at the other videos of our channel, which you can access by clicking on one of the pictures in the credits. And with that, thanks for watching. Take care and see you next time.